again, friends. And as usual, I have this wonderful, wonderful panel. I've got, I'm Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. We have Melissa Barker, the archive lady. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Sherry and everybody. Glad to be here tonight. I'm so glad you're here. We've got Laura Hedgecock, treasure chest of memories. Hey, Laura. Hi. Good to have you. So glad you're here. Good to be here. <laughs> and Dan Earl, Family History Guys here. Hi, Dan. Hello. And we have Bernice Bennett, Ginny B. Roots. She's in the house. Hi. How you doing? Hi there. Hi there. Well, she's not in the house. She's not in the house. She's I'm out in, in the woods. I'm in the woods. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the woods. That background. <laughs> that's, where, that's where she is. And last but not least, and because she's our presenter tonight, <laughs> who we're speaking to tonight, we have Shelly Murphy, Family Tree Girl. Shelly, we're so glad that you've you're here. You're, you're here. We love you. You're part of our Gen Thank Friends you. panel. But for tonight, we wanted to talk to you about this wonderful project that you're working on for um, the University of Virginia. Um, so you have a presentation that you do, and you're going to show us some of your slides, and we're going to ask you some questions. So really, I'm just going to turn the time over to you to get started, and We'll just interrupt you when we have a question. <laughs> so that's that all good? you need to do. I'm okay. really good. I'm going to share my screen. All righty. And let's get this going. Is everybody going to see this okay? I see it. You guys all see, see it. it. Yes. Okay. Hidden in plain sight, finding enslaved labor descendants who built the University of Virginia. And for that's some nice. folks that aren't aware about anything about the University of Virginia, that is Thomas Jefferson's University of Virginia, mm. who came up with the thought process and, and designed it. And I'm going to let the rest of it go because you can search that. <laughs> so here's a brief overview. I'm going to talk about how it came to me, what I do, what I know, understanding slavery, understanding the challenges I was going to face and the strategies, my plan, some of the happenings that were going on, and then going forward. I, I will say one comment that I was just told yesterday that they extended my position. Oh, well, they that's nice. Me, so I am an employee of the University <laughs> of Virginia doing this research, if you can believe it. So, yes, it was, you know, a temporary type thing that they mm -hmm. were getting going, but there's a lot of successes that's happening. Oh, that's so great. So I'm pleased to say I'll be doing it for a couple more years. Good. Congratulations. That. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is. It is. But the University of Virginia, the Board of Visitors put out a statement in 2007 apologizing about slavery. And students, of course, objected. They didn't feel it was enough. So they actually got a group together and they were basically engaged going after some type of a, a memorial. And so that pretty much brought a lot of awareness around within the community of Charlottesville, Virginia. And there's actually five counties surrounding it. So they hired folks. The president, Teresa Sullivan at the time, created a commission on slavery in the university. I retired from a nonprofit working in the affordable housing realm in December of 2018. And so I get a phone call <laughs> July 1. And so I will say I did participate in some of the community engagement sessions. So I was well aware of the program and of course belonged to a lot of genealogy groups mm -hmm. in the, um, the area. So when the phone call came, I knew who it was coming from. And that person <laughs> is my supervisor now. And so first thing, you know, I basically said I didn't do it because I didn't know what he was calling about. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So I didn't not know my what. Fault. Not my fault. <laughs> not my fault. I didn't do it. And he asked basically, what was I doing? So anyway, I said, hey, well, I retired, but you know, doing research, taking on some clients and so forth. So that's what happened there. So one of the things is I feel that I'm really lucky because I have several years behind me, the local area that I live in. And to give context, the uh, University of Virginia is basically um, in downtown city of Charlottesville, Virginia. And you have 
Thomas Jefferson's Monticello down the road. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I am seven miles from Monticello. I have the Highlands, which is James Monroe's mm -hmm. house, right around the corner from Monticello. And then uh, not quite 30 minutes down the road is Mount Pelier, which is James and Dolly Madison's house. So for you, this was, this was not, oh, I've got to learn about the area. You already knew. And that is so key, yes. which you'll see in a minute. Yes. You know, so I understood what was going on and kind of what had happened. So, you know, I had the background active in a lot of groups, which you can see listed on the bullet. Uh, Friends of Central Virginia History Researcher, uh, Researchers, which is a really key group besides our regular, I'm going to say, getting, uh, you know, genealogy groups that come together. That is a group of historians, family historians, genealogists, anthropologists, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, all at the same table. And doing many projects as a group and you typically don't get all of those folks at the same table mm -hmm. all all working towards the same thing right that's and, wonderful and the, yeah it's different and the getting word project is coming out of monticello and um it directly links to thomas jefferson and the sally hemmings whole story okay. descendants okay so i also knew that there were descendants in the area because of these groups and things that I was involved in. I knew there were going to be some lessons that learned and I knew it was going to be challenging mm -hmm. and it was going to be some emotional parts because I'm looking for descendants of slave era, which I thought to myself, well, some people aren't going to know. Some are going to have an assumption that they know, mm -hmm. you know, and then exactly. some are going to be shocked. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing I start off understanding for me was to make sure I throw everything in, in its context. What do I need to know? I got to understand African-American research. It's about money. People were property. Mm -hmm. People were being bought, sold, and rented out. And all of the folks that were working at the university to build it were rented. The university yes. only owned one slave. Oh, Only one. Okay. I have and a question. And everybody else was rented. Okay, yes. Laura, Laura's got a question. I saw a clip where you were speaking of this, and I think you had a, a huge statistic of the amount of buildings that we know about that were built by slaves. Just I want to say it was every building on the university grounds is built by the enslaved laborers. Is that typical throughout the South with the university systems? I would say systems? yes. I would say yes. Yes. Free That's labor. Really... Yeah. And think wow. about, and, and you'll see in a few minutes, think about also the time frame that I'm working at. Um, I was given a spreadsheet to work with a couple thousand lines on them with names and information. And what they did was they pulled information from the financial ledgers hmm. where money was being paid. My yeah, I, that's fascinating, Shelly, that they have that ledger still available so you can look at it Absolutely. and see that they were paying to hire these enslaved people to come build yes. the university. That, to me, it was just fascinating that that and was you'll even still see, around. I took a little clip of it, so you'll see it in a minute. Okay. So Shelley, understanding, yes. I, I just wanted go back to, you know, you mentioned that it's very common to find that the enslaved had a lot to do with the buildings in the South, but we also need to think about what was happening in the North. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Because, yes, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. they go away thinking, oh, it only happened in the South. Oh, no. It was happening in the too. And you had enslaved individuals all throughout the North and the New England states and etc. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So might have been treated a little bit differently, but they were still owned mm -hmm. by someone else. One human owned another. Mm -hmm. So I listed some things about understanding African American research that I thought were key. And it walks you through some eras right there. 
So I knew I was going to have challenges, so I made a bullet list on the challenges. And so I'm not going to go through all of them, but I do highlight one, which is the 21st century thinking. With any genealogical research, you can't take what you know now and go back and try to understand what was going on back there. Exactly. And that is very critical when you're going through slave mm -hmm. era. Uh, research and that's specifically what I would be doing with this project and so and again like I said I won't read through all of them because you guys can see that but you know it's the typical things that we get information that we need to validate so our researching our research has to be done in a box and and you'll know why I'm saying that so um, I come from the nonprofit world and the business world, so I always think on the business lines on my strategies and methods for whatever I'm going to do. So I knew some strategies was that I had to listen, be focused on the time frames. So it's not like going and looking for somebody in 1870 census, even though I had to use that census mm -hmm. to help find descendants that was not a priority at the time because it might have just been the indicator of how to get back you know based gotcha. on who's in that community mm -hmm. so you can see the things that i said i knew i had to access for example freedmen bureau records i was hopping from 1865 to 1872 okay so that's going to give me a little time that if people survive through slavery mm -hmm. They would have made it to 1865. They might not have made it to 1870 for the census. And think about it. I started at 1817 on my list. Wow. So people might not make it to 1870. Mm -hmm. And of course, I use the census as a tool. Google's my friend. And of course, <laughs> online databases. Don't leave Miss Google out. You know that's a woman. So here's some slave era tips that, that this is what I do. This is not coming from anybody else. This is just how I construct my mind. I got to understand the law during the era that I'm researching, mm -hmm. but you can hear Judy Russell saying it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to say You can that. hear her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the things I needed to know was, could I find a record where anybody that became free or was already free? free had to register because just because they're free doesn't mean they weren't a former slave mm -hmm. that would have to be determined so i had to look at free people as well as the people that were enslaved so emancipation papers mm -hmm. where are they who has them right right every that the city of charlottesville is in the middle and it's surrounded by albemarle county virginia and then there is five counties surrounding Albemarle, and every one of them have a historical society. So ah, that's a bingo for me. Yes. You know, and of course, looking at slave narratives, bill of sales, plantation records, and, and so on. So just, just to give you an idea of some of the tips, and I'm always going to be involved with some genealogy group because two heads are always better than one. Oh, exactly. So where are the records? I had to start making a list, and this was the list I started coming up with. I said, okay, the house repositories are going to be number one. Thomas Jefferson had 600 plus slaves. I know there's a descendant group here. I know, according to the list that I have in one of the Library of Virginia's um, database sites, which is called Jefferson's Early Living History, it's a jewel, it's J Jefferson's University early living and i think i gave you the link to that if i did not mm -hmm. make sure i share that for your show notes okay but you can go through my list comes from that database also and you can research slave owners you mm -hmm. can uh, overseers or the enslaved african americans so also i want to know what was at what was at my hands what could i put my hands on this is before COVID. I'm starting July 2019. <laughs> so we got the libraries, archives, and things. I knew I had to know the community. Right. I know Elizabeth Schoen does a fan principal. I got to know the community. It's mm -hmm. everybody, not just who they're associated, 
just with just everybody and what is around and what happened around them in order to for me to find them because it's not always going to be at the right. plantation and most of these are local records too that you're using right because i know that's you're always go local go local go local it's coming <laughs> don't give out my okay. secrets okay bye bye <laughs> but when so, they hired you shelly Yes. Did they have a time frame that they expected you to accomplish all this? I was hired July 1, and I was supposed to be done for as much as I could in December. Oh, then no. they Yes. And then oh. they extended it to April because they were planning a private descendant. Once this memorial was completed, there was going to be a, an event, and that was scheduled for April the 10th, and April 11th was the public event to unveil this uh, fabulous memorial, which I, you know, sent links so you guys mm -hmm. can see it. Mm -hmm. So coming back to here, so again, finding out that I got two more years to work on this is exciting because you guys will understand this and other researchers, once you tap into resources, and families, oh, they're yes. not going anywhere. They're staying right with me. <laughs> that just, if they would end it in December, it's interesting because of the connections that I've made. This mm -hmm. is going to continue. Oh, you know, sure. There's some networking going on, and I put up a Facebook page. So anyway, I wanted to address you know, what plantations were in the area and hopefully tools that are online I could use. And of course, Googling again my friend looking for exactly. surnames and properties i mean bernice, bernice says she's got a question sure well yes and and shelly i may be jumping the gun by asking you this but i wanted to know what were some of your challenges Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> those are some of my challenges but not all <laughs> they're coming okay. did you know this yeah. was coming bernice <laughs> Yeah, the challenge is I knew, just like it says, there might be yeah. some records that are not in the public forum. You know, some could have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, but remember where I'm at. I've got the University of Virginia. I've got all these historical homes. At the time, I was the interim director for the Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society. And now I went back to just the board chair. So I have access to a lot of stuff. And, and I hate to say that it's the easy part of this because I have access to so much because it might not be that way for someone else in another right. area. Right. And again, I'm going to interview people. I know there's going to be oral history coming down. I know the typical things about spelling. You mm -hmm. know, as a researcher mm -hmm. knows, spelling doesn't count, but if you can add it up and make it a word, and it looks <laughs> like the other word, it's probably something that's true. I love that. <laughs> I wasn't going the DNA route, you know, because I needed to do the paper trail. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to move forward. Melissa's got a, got a question before we sure. go forward. Um, I don't know if this is going to be out of sequence, but it's just because you mentioned something and it made me think of a question okay. you know how you know how we work um yes. is your is the um the university and the job that you're doing is uh -huh. it from a grant no okay it's the, the next question after that is because you had the first set of time that you were working with and now you have two years is the scope of your work going to change or is it going to stay no. the same okay no the the memorial i'm going to say it this way the memorial can hold up to four thousand names oh, my list wow. is at two thousand oh wow okay? all right and you some get of them, another two thousand in the next two years <laughs> yeah but think about it um some only have first names and mm -hmm. i have the slave owner some i don't have the slave over owner but i have their name some mm. took the slave owner's name, which surname, which is very rare. It's really not common, which most people think it is. Right. So those are some more challenges as Bernice was asking that question. I also had to determine, and hopefully if they took the, you know, the slaver's name would make it a little easier or a little less time trying to figure out, hey, did they make it to 1870 or, or yeah. whatever? you know 
And so I also wanted to know, were there any public trees out there when I'm looking for the records? Mm -hmm. So here's a glimpse of my spreadsheet, just so you know. Arthur Brockenbro was actually a professor at the university, very well known. He had young Sam, so I'm just giving you a picture of what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. So you can see unknown slaveholder after the date. But then you have the enslaved, and, and it says they're enslaved. Some of it might say free, and then you know exactly what type of work that they did. Hmm. And the rest of the stuff is where they pulled it. So just to give you an idea, so look at, so with Arthur right here, Arthur Brockenbro, I'm going to look for Sam. I'm going to look for Jim, Moses. John Meads has a surname. That's going to take me a whole nother route. And then Simon, and then premise. Premise might be a little easier to work because it's kind of an odd name, right, not a right. John or a Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I also had to hit the slave schedules, 1850 to 1860. And again, I'm still trying to determine if I just had young Sam, where am I going with that? Right. But, you know, right. so who else is around young Sam? And also looking at what he did. Did they have a specialty occupation? I'm not going to find that on the slave schedule. And you referenced a video that was done um, with Terry Allard at PBS here locally. Mm -hmm. Here's the Moffin family. He ah. was a, a professor and his brother Addison was also a professor. So I knew here was a number of slaves, which on the slave schedules for the audience, they're only going to list on 1850 and 1860 slave schedule, the gender and the age besides their color. So you can see a M, which mm -hmm. would probably be mulatto and a B for black. And look at here, this one is telling you that this person who huh. what the, as says blind. Yeah. That's was only statistic. five years old. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. Oh. So again, and here's your gender in the third column. Where'd mm -hmm. my thing go? Here we go. <laughs> There's female, male. Yeah. So yes, that's a little boy, oh. five years old, that was blind. But oh. just to give you, uh, you know, some indication, and, and you all are familiar with the slave mm -hmm. schedules, 1850, 1860. But the key is to ask questions and to toggle through the census and other resources. So 1870 becomes critical for any African-American research, not necessarily just looking at slave era research because it's the first census that came out and the enslaved people who are now free have their full names or the names they have taken. Right. And there's some other data there that I'm not gonna go through, but just to know that it, it's the, the time that all African-American researchers or whoever's researching African ancestry, they want to get to a point that they could see a name, see a location, and hopefully have some of this other information like birthplace, father and mother, where are they born, mm -hmm. uh, month of the birth, or something that can help them go further, okay? So that's a blank sheet showing the columns. I always have a blank census sheet sitting by me because if I can't figure out what's going on in these columns, I can definitely count the rows and count the <laughs> columns and you all have done this, yes. you know, to figure out what's yep. there because there could be clues there. Sure. So here's a sample of the 1870 census. I'm in Albemarle County and I'm looking through the names and I referenced the Moppin name. Mm -hmm. There is a, a Maupin that made it to 1870. Great. And also yeah. pay attention to the date that it was done. Because if I'm trying to distinguish between the uh, age or a birth or, you know, something like that, mm -hmm. I want to know when they were grabbing the census, the week or whatever the time for what right, frame right. was, to be able to help hone in on that. Mm -hmm. Does it mean everything that's on the census is correct? It's only a lead. <laughs> so I'm saying that to everybody. Yep. It's only a lead. And it's probably one of the most, 
inaccurate documents <laughs> you got that, that right. <laughs> use. And the reason is because we don't know who gave the information. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been the little kid right here, yeah. 11 years old, yeah. Billy, that gave the information and said, oh, my mother is a domestic. Yeah. No, they don't know that. They don't know, nor do they really know their ages. So <laughs> they don't know awesome their ages or or where somebody might have been born. Right. So here's a sample. This is one of the Maupin gentlemen, Ooh. and there he is listed on the 1870 census. Huh. And he actually was rented to the oh. university to do work, hmm. and that also connects to the Maupin family. Uh, that was spoken and you met the descendant talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, the connection to his family. So my research steps began, be, begin with questions. And I like to call it the art of questions. And that's really what we're doing is asking questions right. all throughout our research and trying to validate it. Other people can say, oh, I'm doing an exhaustive search. Yeah, you are. But you're <laughs> asking questions and yes. questioning it. And so I start off always, what do I know? What do I need to know? Who's going to know the information? Yes. Or what will have the information as in a document or a resource? Mm -hmm. And then I plan my research from there. So I know someone had a question. These are my typical things that anytime I do a presentation, I say, follow the money, the land, the water, the community, and the faith of the mm -hmm. people. And it doesn't matter what era. Exactly. But this is research yeah. tips for you. And somebody had a question in the chat box regarding this. I have a question, Shelly. Uh -oh. You mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going back to something you said. You you knew that uh, Mr. Maupin uh, was rented out. Yes. How did you know that? He was on my list. Okay. <laughs> he what was on of, my list. Okay. What asked, kind of list was it? Was it a, a list of laborers or tell us what this list was? I'm going to show you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> so Mr. Maupin showed up and Socrates uh, Maupin owned Dabney and Dabney, it had a time frame just like this line right here, but that would have been Gabney Maupin right here, Addison Maupin right here, the owner. So I have a spreadsheet, that's my guide, what I work from. This just happens to be 1825, a small portion of it. My list starts, this is the list I was saying, starts at 1817 and goes forward up to like 1866. Okay. So when you say it's your list, did you create the list or was this list given to you? The list was given to me. Okay. And so you pulled this information from somewhere else. Oh, what you said, no, the list was given to you. The list was given to me. Yes. From the financial ledgers. Okay. Ledgers. Anywhere yeah, that's what money. I'm trying to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so, we got so there. We, we got know there. Bernice was not listening. <laughs> I was, down. but I was just having, you know, it's sometimes good for repetition. I love it. Repeat it again. You're right. You're right. Very good. Very so, good. So I was given a list that was compiled from the university from a group. And, and so some researchers and some individuals put together this list, which I use as my guide. And that's where I have names of the enslaved laborers. And just like you saw on that piece of that spreadsheet. And so I was given that. And that's, that's where I go seeking out people mm -hmm. is based on who's on that list or who is on this website. And the website is J U E L. And I don't know if Sherry, if you want to pull it up yeah. or something when I get done, because I'm almost there. And, uh, you know, you can look at it and see what they have done. It is an excellent example of what can be done. And um, the university also started a whole type of coalition with other universities. That's great. Throughout the world. Uh, that are looking at doing the same stuff that are already doing wonderful. it. You know about Brown University, mm -hmm. uh, William and Mary is mm -hmm. doing it, and they call it the Lemon Project down there as well. So I'm going to come back to the rule here. 
So this is, this is my foundation, asking questions and following these little rules, okay? Okay, this is prior to COVID <laughs> because this is the first time in my life the last few months that I have basically totally been doing research online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% in favor of that because not everything is online, number one. And I knew I had to go local. But typically when we have the way it was, I'm not going to say normal, but the way it was, <laughs> um, I needed to go into the historical societies, yes. the courthouses, and, and also talk to these families. Okay? So finding, here's an example. So I got, here's my little list, and I see who the slave owner is. And this is 1821, the enslaved is Jim Henderson. And he was hired. And then there's just a little context that comes off of the document there. And again, coming from the financial ledger. So Richard Price was paid $60 for Jim Henderson doing some work, hmm. okay? So he's on my list. I went checking, I got, I got to find Jim and I got to find descendants that mm -hmm. connect to him. It doesn't mean I'm going to find Henderson's. Right. Correct? Right. Think about it. Yeah. I might be finding something else. Mm -hmm. And this lady was also in that video I shared with you. And we actually met at a hotel lobby. I was there for a meeting, you know, out of town in the morning and she lived in the area. And so we met and went through and we were backtracking till we got the gym. Uh, and it just all fell together, little tears and stuff. But oh, I'll bet. when it starts off at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have that link. About. We'll have that link so everybody can watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So here, is, here I am looking for another person. And I knew the Coles is a big plantation. Mm -hmm. And it had a lot of enslaved individuals. So I was looking for an Ephraim Smith. And so I had dates for Ephraim because... This elderly gentleman in his 90s says, I don't know much about my father's family and I want to know if they were connected. Uh. And so, again, I know the dad, this Ephron, which is his grandfather, made it to um, 1870. And then I'm backtracking. So this is actually a labor contract. Mm -hmm. And he was enslaved by Tucker Coles. But his labor contract is with Peyton Coes, which is Tucker's brother. Tucker dies. Mama passes Ephraim over ah. before 1865. So he did a labor contract. And if I remember right, it was $20 a year. And oh or something gosh. like that. I haven't. Yeah. Here it, it says is. $100 a year. Um, I see that. Okay. $100 per year. And he gets proper food and quarters and then down here if there's any violations or damage ah uh, that's for the 20 it's the 20 dollars yeah okay so oh, wow. again i'm driving people that are doing this type of research is to make sure you hit the freedmen bureau records mm -hmm. and they're on ancestry mm -hmm. they're on family search yes and they're at the national archives so he survives and i can find his name and he had a surname that isn't who the enslaved him, yes. enslaved him, which for me, that sets off a whole nother list of research. Mm -hmm. like, where did he get it? Where did it come from? <laughs> Is it the mother's name or the, you know, whatever. Yeah. Just, you don't know, but you'd have to walk through that process. So I knew there were other records out there, narratives, Freedman Bureau, military cases, court cases. I knew the university has special collections. And I knew once I started sitting down with people that I, there would be oral histories. Mm -hmm. So I, one of the first things I did was, and it, again, I mentioned that I had retired and I'm coming from the affordable housing field and real estate. So any program you can access, you got to intake, right? That's right. So I came up with the intake form. <laughs> yeah, I came up with the intake form because my goal was I can't sit and do the research with the people sitting in front of me because they're waiting for miracles. Mm. I needed to 
get the information in my hands and sit in my own space and do this, you know, working on the computer. And so I started building private trees on Ancestry. I needed a central place right. to put these. And then I um, download a JEDCOM and then pass it on to the university because ah. at some place they'll be able to show the work that's being done mm -hmm. and, and how it tracks back either beginning with the enslaved labor and going back or vice versa, starting with, because they always say for genealogists and folks to start with yourself, if you're mm -hmm. going to research your family, I say start wherever you got it and just go for it. <laughs> you don't have to always start with yeah. yourself. I want you to start with what you have documented that is that you have proven and you have evidence of. And it could be that I start something with my mother versus me. I you know, you. it doesn't matter you. because if you need to come back currently, mm -hmm. do it. So, Shelly, like are, they, are, they are they putting all this information that you're gathering on the families, is the university putting that online somewhere so their families can Not find yet. it? But Not will they? Yet. Do you think they will? Yes. There okay, will be good. indication there will be a site. Oh, great. And hopefully that will include the things, you know, a tip, you know, type thing, mm -hmm. but to show the trees. Oh, and yeah. to date, this was with the probably um, two months ago, I built 70 trees that I'm working wow. on and on Ancestry. And like I said, I hope they don't shut me down. But um, because <laughs> some of these, I need to have the availability of hints mm -hmm. coming right, 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 right. see if someone's yes. already done that research. Sure. Because plantation owners in this area, there were small ones, but mm -hmm. most of them were large. And they're coming from different counties. Mm -hmm. So I make, you know, during the time before COVID, I made regular visits. Like I said, I'd start at the historical society mm -hmm. because they all have drawers full of family things yes. that were donated. Yes. And so people now can go on. There's a Google Doc with this form on it. I shared the link on a Facebook page because I thought that's another way to research. And mm -hmm. then I start posting in all the area, historical societies and genealogy groups, anywhere I saw the word Virginia. Oh yeah. And that was an opportunity to yeah. say, hey, did you have people during this time, you know, living in this area? So some of the happenings was I did meetings at the Jefferson School African American Heritage Center. They had an alumni, call, uh, alumni cafe. I also met at local, local coffee shops, at people's houses, mm -hmm. libraries, and at the historical societies. And so we did have a gathering uh, December 14th, and it was at Jefferson School. And there was about 75 to 100 attendees there. Hmm. And um, I was sitting in location, but I also had a lot of the genealogy groups that were there. And they all were pretty much prepared like a community for questions because we're all looking at the same community yes. that we're working there. And so the connections could come from anywhere. Plus we had built these trees on the ones, you know, that we had successfully made it to the enslaver or to the decision. Mm -hmm. And they were up on the wall. All around oh. the wall so people could walk around. So I can't say I strictly do this by myself because of the resources in the community that I live in, because we're all helping each other, because mm -hmm. it might be things that I'm finding that's helping somebody else. Sure. And uh, Getting Word did a, uh, Getting Word is at Monticello, and that has to do, again, with Sal, uh, Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson, and mm -hmm. they did an open meeting type forum and the descendants that we had found were all you know invited sharing information coming with their questions hmm. so we just had tables set up and people could walk around photographs were there it was it was very nice and a great turnout and then i do presentations like this mm -hmm. i've got one coming up for ollie and i'm gonna do one for the daughters of the american Revolution. oh that's great a little uh, group yeah so it's group well, you never know who you're going to, who's going to hear you. Oh gonna my gosh. From. I, yeah. there's family stories that, you know, my ancestors are from there that can reach out to you. So it's wonderful. Absolutely. And the word, you know, spread. Yes. 
So I'm pretty much ending it basically saying, you know, we got to bring this together. America's mm -hmm. not at peace with slavery. Nope. We have evidence of what's going on right now. African-American research is going to take a little bit longer in some cases. Uh, it just depends what's out there and if we can find it. And I want to encourage people to keep telling the stories. And the research doesn't end. You know, call mm -hmm. out the names when you find them. Exactly. And, and just realize that, you know, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have the brick walls. And you know what? It's okay because that makes us question the information exactly. and for us to go find where it might be some answers. So the rest of this was just going forward. <laughs> they were supposed to have the public event that yeah. didn't happen. Oh. And, you know, hopefully at this time, I didn't know the position was going to continue and um, which we got the word that it is. And one of the things that I did early on was uh, basically appointed a descendant leadership group. Oh, so they are the feeders to make sure we have their input as this is going on. Mm -hmm. Even regarding the, in, the research that I do, the sharing of information, them helping me find more people, you know, right. besides social media. And mm -hmm. so they are together, they've bonded, and they are going forth. So matter That's of fact, right. they took that intake form and put it in a <laughs> Google Doc form. Good for them. In heaven. Good so for that's them. that's basically all I had. There's some of the links that I shared. Okay. And there's the right, we'll have some. There's the jewel yeah. site right there. Yes. Okay. And that's Jefferson University, the Early Life Project. Mm -hmm. And a wealth of information. Just go over on the panel and look at people. Okay. okay, I have a question. Yeah. Of the descendants yeah. you've found so far, what is, how far away, how spread out are the descendants? Where have you found them geographically? Oh, great question. The furthest one away is Canada. Ah. And then Texas is the next furthest away. Huh. Other than that, they're pretty much not just local, but uh, New York, New Jersey, Mississippi, mm -hmm. Alabama, you know. And how many were still in Virginia? The descendants were still in Virginia. The city of Charlottesville and the counties all around, I couldn't even give you a number. Oh, okay. Because Just curious. of Monticello, Mount Pelier, yeah. and the Highlands. Yeah. And those generations are still here. Mm -hmm. And each of those historic houses all have descended groups with them. Ah. So there's a lot of engagement mm -hmm. in networking in that. So I take a lot of pride being able, because just being a genealogist, I'm around all of these resources. Oh, yeah. You know? and it's a and wonderful it's, area. Yeah. You just, yeah. yeah. I couldn't do it if I was sitting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> you, you know, it's just not going to happen. Nothing against Grand Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's where I was born and raised, Ottawa Hills Indians. So anyway. <laughs> you know, high school. So is there any other questions? Well, other Shelly, than that? Yeah. Shelly, I was going to say, you know, um, there may be people who are researching their families who own plantations in that area and may run across maybe a clue that, oh, maybe this, the enslaved people on this plantation may have been hired out. And so that's important for you to get that information as well. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. You know, family stories of the African American families that they had families living there is important, and so are the inform so is the information that can be gathered by the descendants of those um, slaveholders too. You know, you may find well, something that can say, help. Yeah, I will say this, and I'll make this statement, and I'm mm -hmm. sure Bernice is going to agree with me. It might not come out the proper way. It's all but right. African Americans <laughs> cannot do research without no. doing the white Americans research. Exactly or That's the correct. European side. There, it's, so I'm mm -hmm. appealing to the white yeah. Americans who did have uh, plantations and were slave owners, mm -hmm. share the information. You have so many groups out there, have that conversation. Absolutely. Come to the table, which is a national organization, which we have a chapter here. And I'm 45 minutes from Richmond, which has the Library of Virginia in it. Mm -hmm. so that's another resource within an hour that is unlimited with millions and millions of documents and things that connect. Mm -hmm. um, I transcribe documents for the Library of Virginia. 
And this is where I learn about manumission papers, right. emancipation papers. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing even Jefferson has papers that are there that, mm -hmm. of course, they've got boxes, boxes and boxes. They scan them up and folks like us volunteer and, yeah. in, uh, you know, transcribe those for more information to get right. out there. So it's, it's, it's a good project yes. and, and I'm lucky to have it and thankful, yeah. but it's even better to be able to walk with somebody into that memorial. Oh yeah. I was just going to say that memorial is there. Right. Yes. Yeah, yes. The I'll memorial's been built. Up. Yeah. I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine how emotional that is for people. That's just yeah. got to be. So that's that up and down stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to call it, we're doing real genealogy because I don't bring DNA in here. I said, that's not my <laughs> You're job. Doing real... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, You're doing I'm trying real to connect genealogy. it that way. I'm dealing with the paperwork because that's what was generated yes. during yes. the era was paperwork, even right. though DNA was generated too, but still. Wow. You know. Shelly, do you have a story that stands out? Do you have just, you know, a remarkable story that you found that just really stands out or any type of story, just something that really stands out from anybody that you found? Well, I think the one with Lorenzo on the PBS, mm -hmm. he, he didn't have a clue and he researches. He <laughs> just had not gotten back yeah. that far yet. Yeah. And and I probably went a little overboard because I tracked the White family because I started seeing that name Dabney. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, wait a minute. Well, I end up in France. I know that <laughs> Maupin family comes in in the 1600s into Williamsburg, and then they work their way up here to Upper Brown County. Yeah, yeah. But again, that helped me establish where that Dabney name was coming. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was critical. But for him, he had no idea. Mm -hmm. And again, he is a local. He works for the county school uh, department or something. Uh, like yeah, it. yeah. But How fun he for also him. does a lot of documentation. <laughs> he, um, there's a Paramount Theater here in Charlottesville, and during segregation times, the blacks were up in the balcony, right. and they had the side entrance, yeah. Yeah. and one of the documentaries he did was called The Best Seats in the House, where they thought uh, they were separating yeah. the blacks up in the top. They had unobstructed views of whatever <laughs> was on the stage. There was no issues, and so, and they interviewed people uh, elders, I'm going to say, people yeah. that remember going in that side door up the back steps. So oh, wow. uh, it was very interesting. Oh. But again, able to connect his family mm -hmm. and, and everybody still in the area. And his oh, wow. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. What a blessing oh. you've been to these families. Yeah. Wow. That is just wonderful. Yeah. It now, feels good. What do you think is the biggest obstacle to families that maybe they do have records from plantations what do you think the biggest obstacle for them coming forward is it just not knowing who to talk to is it family shame what is it do you, in it's your opinion little, it's a little bit of everything mm -hmm. i think but some of the things is um oral history is the first thing that came to mind because we might be only getting a tidbit of it and it might have been something that happened during someone's childhood and they're remembering, maybe the story gets changed a little bit. Remember the little game that mm -hmm. you start the message at and you go around. <laughs> Telephone game or there. gossip game, yeah. It's yeah. a whole nother topic. Absolutely. But I think the challenges is what they assume or that grandma told them this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and they don't see anything else where, you know, I could probably lay out some documents or maybe they only one person is on my list and and they know there's 10 other people but they didn't get rented to the university oh and they want all of their family on there and i'm acknowledging <laughs> all of them but as far as building the tree i'm directing yeah. it back you know where i can document money spent mm -hmm. a rental mm -hmm. and and the thing of it is like i said earlier the university only owned one slave and that's something so all of that construction and, yeah. and ladies and gentlemen those buildings are still standing <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful yeah. campus or okay and so the the website that you're working with the jewel um then that becomes the repository for the information you found 
they they that list is compiled from jewel okay so the research and things that created that also created what i have so go to the category called people on the website and then you'll find my same people That's okay because i'm just wondering then because you know you're working with things that aren't traditional rec record sets where a lot mm -hmm. of us can just very easily go into ancestry and diddle around so i'm just wondering what happens with these records that then there is like a repository so the next person that's i can't remember the guy's name something that started with an a you know they, he's looking at him and wanting to know that they can discover what you've already discovered mm -hmm. Well, also the university, which most universities do, has a special collections, I'm going to say library mm -hmm. or, or institution right. besides a library on the grounds. And again, University of Virginia is, is called grounds, not campus. And so I have to make sure I correct myself. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a special collections um, library, and I'm seeing the actual documents on a lot of this. Yeah. yeah. So inventory sheets and also they have a fabulous website that's, you know, and all institutions typically have this that you research. You know how Percy is from mm -hmm. um, Allen County? Mm -hmm. you put in a topic or you put yes. in a name. Anything right. that they have access to comes up. Comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because okay. I'm researching right. now uh, George Tucker who was a lawyer for the university and he had five enslaved um, folks. And this links to the Tucker family, if you know about 1619 down in Hampton, Virginia. Oh, okay. First baby born in the United States, ah, so gotcha. and so forth. William ah. Tucker. And so there's a George Tucker who's related. Oh, okay. But but he had five slaves. He wasn't totally um, good with having slaves. He was leaving the university in 1845 and he freed all five of his slaves. <laughs> That's and great. I, on Wonderful. my list, I have names of only two of them. Ah, uh, so you need and, to. And according to one of the, the Black Tucker descendants, the other three, when he left and goes to Philadelphia, they bail on him. They're free now, they're not uh. staying with him. So I don't have those names. So I'm now looking for Isaac and John that was connected to something around George Tucker and and whatever he did here, whatever he did in Philadelphia. And when he died in Philadelphia, he's actually buried at the university mm. burial. There's a cemetery out there, mm. oh. besides the slave cemetery. Bernice, did you have a question? Oh, I thought maybe you did. Okay, sorry. That's okay, that's fine. I, th I thought I saw you raise your hand, but it's, it's all no. good. It was a leaf blowing by. It was a leaf blowing <laughs> Not she was swatting. Flowing. She was swatting a bug. Yeah. <laughs> She's out in the woods. <laughs> so one last tip okay. is get over the fact that you're going to have challenges and brick yeah. walls. You're going to have them. Don't even mm -hmm. stress yourself out. You just got to deal with them. And the last thing in the business world, we're always taught about staying in the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, jump out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Get out of the box. Keep your butt in the box. <laughs> Don't jump out of that box. No, I'm saying that for a reason, because you're going down rabbit holes <laughs> right, and right, right. jump out. Exactly. Stay oh. in, stay focused, and yep. deal with that evidence. Every record's going to create another record. Right, So right. you need to follow that aspect. Mm -hmm. So stay in the box, don't get out. That's Absolutely. my last words on it. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Thank any, you. Does anybody else have a question for Shelly? That was really great. This is That's a wonderful, great. wonderful, wonderful project that you're working on. And, and I just love how it was student initiated. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. I swear, yeah. I think so, our young people, they have wisdom. They have vision. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, yeah, we're just clocking around, just doing what we've always been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they said no. And mm. the whole design team, and look at the pictures. It's and beautiful. People can Google right. it, and each of yeah. those panels weigh four thousand pounds. Woo. And the circles make panels going around. Oh, and wow. one of the uh, teachers who was a slave became free. Mm -hmm. um, her eyes. If if you go read the part about uh -huh. the actual memorial, yeah, her eyes are there, and there's gonna there's a water. Yeah. Feature that's there also yeah it's beautiful oh, it's, it's ground now. yeah oh yeah it's absolutely yeah. beautiful yeah. now i want to you know when we are allowed to travel again 
if you'd yes. like to go visit, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. That would yeah, be plus, fabulous. I, you know, I have a son not far from there. It would be fun right. to see my son. Exactly. Yep. exactly. Well, you can always come. Bernice has been down here. Um, you go to Mount Pelier yep. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you, you, it's the tourist spot too. <laughs> It's exactly. One day we'll be able to travel again and we can all just come see you. <laughs> it's not virtual. Virtual. Absolutely. Yeah, Sherry and I can't room together if we do a virtual. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what this is all about, keeping us apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Shelly. We You're appreciate you sharing. You and thanks everybody for being here and your great questions. We appreciate it. We will see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.